Okay, so after the last video of uh, eliminating that as the reason for our trifecta, I'm going to go ahead and analyze what these wheels are doing using my scanner here. So I'm going to select a few things. I want to monitor system voltage if possible. I want to do rotation rate. I have the whole front end off the ground, so we want to do front right, front left, confirm, okay, so now let's see what we got going on here. So as we rotate the wheel, the front right does read. Okay, let's go over to this wheel. We'll see what we got going on. <clears throat> Nothing. <clears throat> So, we know that one's working, this one's not. So I'll go ahead and pull the wheel off and we'll get a good look at that sensor. Also brought my uh, UEI meter so we can check some volt, or some um, um, resistance and then uh, we'll know if that thing's shot and I need to replace it or if I just need to clean it off or take a look at what that ring's doing. All right, I'll try to get in here for you guys to see. Oh, I already moved the one. Uh, uh, the one bolt that holds that sensor in, it is a, the five millimeter hex. And I don't know how well you'll even be able to get in there to see that ring, but if I can try to get you in there. Oh. That is the hole. So that ring's still in there, we can see it. See if I can rotate the rotor. It doesn't look too dirty. So the ring's in there, the ring rotates. Here's the sensor, it's maybe mildly dirty. So I'll clean it off real quick and then we'll go test the volt the uh the resistance. We'll see if this thing's shot or not, if I need to replace it. Alright, hopefully you'll all be able to see this. Uh, so that, getting this thing apart was a shit show. The uh, original, this is the original one. It's a Siemens or Simmons. Uh, it's got the BMW emblem on it. So this is original or a genuine replacement. Judging by how brittle and everything was on the uh, car side, I'm assuming this was original. So, uh, the ohms of resistance on this thing should be about 0.7. If it's too excessively high or too excessively low, it's bad. As you can see, I check resistance with my probes here. So, it's about 0.6. Which is, I mean, kind of close to where it needs to be, but I guess it's off by just enough it's not going to work. So I reckon I'll have to order a new one, just to be sure. Oh, uh, no, here's what this end looks like. Uh, normally there's a little thing, if you remember from an E46, uh, that you can kind of squeeze tab, you squeeze and pull. Yeah, that disintegrated and broke, so... Uh, on my replacement, if I get that, I'm gonna to have to chop it down. Not quite so far, but a scotch in order for me to get that on and then back off again. But before I write this off as a total loss here, I'm gonna blast it with some uh, electrical contact cleaner there and there. I'm gonna just kind of half-ass put it back in there. I'll give the wheel a rotation. And uh, if we don't get anything on there, then I'll just order the new part. Okay, well I went ahead and put my uh, dealio back in the box, that way we don't have any corrosion building up or anything in the meantime. 
while I order that part. So I'm going to go ahead and order a new sensor because uh, rotating the wheel, clearing the code, none of that's making the lights go off. And as I rotate this wheel, it still gets no reading. So even though the resistance showed that it was right, or close to it anyway, should be at least 0.7 ohms of resistance, but we were at like 0.6 some change, so I guess it's just below the threshold amount. So I don't know, I guess maybe the ring rubbing against it wore the, uh, the sensor down enough and it's not reading or something, but not a big deal. I'll just order a new one and then uh, we'll get her in. So for now, that's attached, it's plugged in, and then I also went ahead and put my bolt. Are you guys gonna hear see? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, you can see. I put my... Uh, six hex back through there so the sensor's in there so no gunk can fly in there and get my ring dirty in the meantime so i'll go ahead and put the wheel back on i'm getting a headliner in this tomorrow so i'll go ahead and order that deal and then when it comes in we'll go ahead and do a, it'll be a real quick change in and out so we'll just get that done and we'll call it a boom done and uh, i won't be doing the headliner myself i'm having a professional do that because one thing i don't know how to do it's interior work so as you can see back here, got a nice big sag going on that used to not be like that, but I suspect when I had my rear window retinted, uh, their heads kept touching it, and then, well, that caused a chain reaction of headliner saggage. And I also wonder if they didn't damage my little deals here so my defrost doesn't work. I guess I won't know until the winter time, but I'll be pissed if they broke that too. You can't win for losing. It was either I can't see out of this because of the bad tent, or now I can see out of this when the weather is good because of the bad tent, but I can't see out of it because uh, my defrost won't work. But that remains to be seen this winter. Um, all right, that's it for this video, guys. I guess the next one will be uh, when the sensor comes in, I'll finally replace it. So thanks for watching, guys. Peace. All righty, so it's now, and eh, maybe almost a week later. Well, probably not a week, it's a few days later. Uh, BMW is still the upholstery shop. I'll be able to pick that thing up. Hopefully today I can get a ride down there and grab it. Um, but in the meantime, our ABS front sensor has come in, VDO brand, and we're going to check the resistance on this thing to make sure it's all nice and hunky-dory. So I got my two bent, well, I took a paper clip, broke it in half, and now it's bent to, to where we can stick it down in there. Poke out and touch so we can get a good resistance reading. So, I think you guys can see that. Yeah, you can. 4.86 ohms of resistance. Sliding this thing around changes the reading slightly, but 4.86 is where we got. So, hopefully that'll be within spec when we go to reinstall it in the car. And the other one was, I think, like 0.6 something. Memory serves me well. But uh, we'll hopefully get this thing in. Probably not today. Uh, it's what it's like 12 34 in the morning now it's sunday morning but i just got off work so just got done eating supper or i guess supper whatever the third meal of the day so all right boom done uh we'll go ahead and get this in the car and then we'll hook the uh the uh, scanner up to it and make sure we can get a signal from the wheel spinning and then that should be uh, should wrap up this video We should be good to go. So I'll catch y'all Well for me, it'll be a different day for you It'll be a couple seconds and we'll see what's doing Okay, we're back outside it's a couple days later after that midnight test I was doing now use my angle grinder and on the new sensor I chopped this much off just sawed it clean off. The reason for that was, of course, because on the car part of the connector, this side, uh, the little things broke off where we could actually grip it. So I sawed enough of that off, so if I ever have to take this off again, I can grip it with my fingers and uh, pull it loose. So uh, the, I haven't completely removed the old sensor. It's still... Uh, bolted onto the rotor area but I got this thing plugged in just so we can see if we have made any progress and immediately you will note the trifecta the triforce 
is gone. So that's good. I'll go ahead and clear the codes with the machine. This guy. And then we'll uh, bolt the sensor in. And then we'll uh, take her for a spin and make sure the lights don't come back on. All right, so I already put the just put the sensor back in. New sensors in, old sensors completely out. And let's go ahead and read all our codes and get rid of everything. So we have some extra codes here, I'm guessing from driving around with that as bad as it was for us. We have something called 5D Function Tank Venting System. Okay, guessing that's a uh, EVAP code. Can time out, ASC, DSC, so acceleration and slip control, dynamic stability control, obviously from the sensor, and can time out electronic transmission management. Okay. So we're going to assume these are uh, related to what we just had. That, uh, all that good stuff with the sensor. Okay, so we have a code, what is that, uh, 82? Yeah, 82, CAN, ABS, DSC signal. All right, that makes sense, because we had a code. So we didn't have a functioning ABS sensor. All right, we still have anything in stability control. Yes, the wheel speed sensor transmits no signal. Should be transmitting now, though. Get and clear fault memory. Yes, succeeded. Okay. This is the security alarm. I doubt I'll have anything here, but check it anyway while we're here. Power on, reset. Zero F. Uh, okay, well, I'll go ahead and clear that. Why not? Steering angle sensor. Let's check it. Why not? Okay. Clear it. And we've already done the airbags. Because these never go away. Because I need to take that door off one of these days. Internal control unit, side airbag, front, right, and power supply. Blah, blah, blah. Their fault memory won't do any good, but uh, while I'm in here, fuck it. Okay. Everything's clear now. And for good measure, before I uh, start driving around, I got the wheel loose, loosely put on. I didn't torque it down, but lugs are on, wheels on. Now we'll give her a spin, make sure we can see data. Ugh. There she blows, see? Front left. Now it gives a reading. Rotating. There it is. So, all right, that's it. She should be good to go now. I can uh, unplug my thing, torque these down, set it back down to the ground, and that's it. She's road ready. We now have a functioning uh, analog brake system again, dynamic stability control, and we'll be good. So there you go, guys. That's, that's all she wrote. That is how you properly diagnose and replace uh, what's wrong with your ABS, uh, dynamic stability control, and brake when you have your trifecta going on. Um, now I get not everybody's going to have that sensor, so they can't do, you know, live streaming data. I get that. But if you do have a multimeter, like my uh, UEI meter, I did show you how you can check the resistance. And that one was below 0.7. It was 0 0.608 or whatever it was, and then the new one was, uh, you know, significantly higher than that. So there you have it, guys. Okay, I gave you two ways to do this. Ideally, you'd like to have both of those tools so you can actually clear your codes and everything when you're done. But uh, I hope this helped, and uh, you know, do what you got to do, guys. We got to keep these beasts on the road as long as we can. Thanks for watching. Peace. But before I let you guys go, I figured I'd show you the new headliner. Uh, as you can see, it is noticeably a different color than what the old uh, material was. Which, whatever, I don't really care about that as long as it's not sagging anymore. 
That's all right by me. This is noticeably of a cheaper quality, though. Uh, he mentioned that it was closest to Toyota Gray, so I don't know if that means this is like a Toyota material headliner, but it's not sagging anymore. At least there's that. Um, for some reason, my seat's lost memory. I'm guessing he unplugged my power supply because my seats were all moved. The memories weren't working anymore, and uh, something else I'm supposed to remember happened. Oh, there was like a missing piece of plastic. It was like, I was just chilling. I was like, where'd that go? Apparently it, was on, it goes on one of the seat tracks, but you know, whatever. And then uh, the only other thing is I'm guessing he broke these little tabs that hold the motion sensor in. See, because it's kind of dangly now. I guess there's no real way I can keep that up. Unless maybe I tried to Velcro it or something, I don't know. I guess I could just leave it and have to deal with it being semi-dangly. Oh well, I mean, it's behind me, I'm never gonna have to look at it anyway, right? But, uh, oh well. Guess I'll get over it. But, we're, we're alright, I guess. So now we got new headliner, no more sagging in the back. So, only 300 bucks I spent, so maybe if I go back in time, I guess, maybe I should have coughed up, ponied up the extra dough and had to match the color exactly. But, yeah, whatever. If it goes out again, maybe I'll do that one day. But if not, this will have to do. I'll try not to look up at it too much, but 300 bucks, you can't really beat it. Alright, so that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.